Welcome to episode of Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Level Podcast, Life Week One Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Today, I have uh, I, I guess his name is Dr. Cody Goldman. We're going to be talking about the psychology of weight loss. Uh, unless I totally screwed it up, uh, which could happen. I just had a five-hour midterm. Meet. Yesterday, my brain is a little fuzzy. Uh, I never wanted to sit in this desk chair after five hours ever again, but I did it anyway. So, what's fucking wrong? Hi. So, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you got started? Yes, uh, <clears throat> my name is Dr. Cody Goldman, as you said. Um, I'm a, originally a chiropractor, <clears throat> and um, I've run uh, a big wellness center in Denver. And, I was, of course, I was an Army tank commander uh, around the age of 17. And through a series of events, I found natural health care. And um, over the years of working with people, I found <clears throat> my patients – we're doing these very, very unhealthy weight loss programs. I was working with patients uh, with sickle cell anemia and cancers and digestive problems and help them heal from all kinds of stuff. And But I saw that they were going to these weight loss clinics <clears throat> like Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers and you know uh, metabolic centers. And the problem was they're losing weight and gaining it all back. And they were doing it in really, really unhealthy ways. <clears throat> so I set out to take my natural healthcare principles and put it into a healthy weight loss system. And that's what we call the, the fast 40 weight loss system, which is a doctor supervised hormone reset to actually burn fat and it creates a permanent weight loss. So there's no chemicals, no pharmaceuticals, and it, and it literally rewires someone's nervous system and, and chemistry. So that's how I got started. And, 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 and that's where I, that's what moved me in that direction. So my first question is, uh... Do you, how come do you find those programs like Weight Watchers and and uh, Jenny Craig to be do they work and do you recommend them or do you feel or do you think people should stay the heck away from them? So it's um you know you probably it's hard to ask that answer that question as a generality. Because you the, well, probably can answer each one specifically, but you asked about Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers specifically. Um, the the not all programs are the same, so I don't want to I don't want to say this about every program, but the majority of uh, here's a statistic in America, eighty percent of weight loss programs fail. This is an American statistic, so this is not my opinion. I'm telling you what the actual stats are. And 80% of weight loss programs fail. <clears throat> what that means is people lose some weight and they gain it back within three to six months. That's a complete failure. So I don't want to give you my opinion as to whether or not they work. I'll just give you the statistics uh, of what, of what um, we see in America. So I found that very interesting how uh, people gain it back all in uh, three to six months. Could I ask your opinion uh, on like what you think about the whole? Uh, have you ever seen the show The Biggest Loser? Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, but like they had a huge, big, controversial issue, and that all the people who lost all the weight dramatically because they were working out in the gym for like sixteen plus hours every single day, they kind of they gained it all back. Right, and so, um, so just to clarify, what was your specific question? So I was just curious, what, what did, you, what do you, if you ever saw the show, The Biggest Loser, what, uh, like, do you feel like that? That's like, do you think, do you think those diets are like totally, totally crazy that they were working out for sixteen plus hours a week? Well, every well day pretty um, much. I was going to ask you. It, Jimmy, what do you think? What is your opinion on that? You're the fitness guy. Uh, I, would, I don't, I could never do that. That's totally insane. And I mean, not even the good kind of insane, like 
crazy fitness guy. <laughs> uh, that's a little. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I asked that. Cause it sounds like you already knew the answer to that question. Well, um, what might be good is I'll just kind of say this for, for just for everybody is I just launched a book and so just give some framework for healthy weight loss. We launched a book called the four secrets to healthy weight loss. Okay. And it would be probably good is to actually run through those four secrets because I think you'll you'll probably you and your audience will benefit tremendously um, because you can ask about other weight loss programs but um, honestly I can through telling you about what I found works you can already decipher what's not going to work from that um, so I was going to say that's, that might be the best way to do this and um, for example and this will explain your question one of the first secrets of weight loss is you must understand you've got to know that what type of weight you want to lose. So when people say you want to lose weight, well, you have water, you have muscle, and you have fat. So people can lose all kinds of muscle and water and say, oh, I successfully lost weight. But the problem is if you lose muscle, you're very, very unhealthy. If you lose muscle, you destroy, you, it creates a very unhealthy body. So um, the biggest thing is that the majority of weight loss programs are focused on calorie reduction. Calorie reduction is a very unhealthy way to lose weight. Calorie reduction eventually leads to muscle uh, loss. So when you reduce your calories beyond your expenditure, it also triggers a part of your brain that has a, it's called the anti-starvation mechanism. It tells your body to store fat. So it's very important. If somebody wants to get fat, I would start reducing your calories. I want people to hear this. If you want to get fat, starve yourself. And then people go, that doesn't make sense. Well, if you look at what people do, they starve themselves for a month, three months, six months, one week. After they're done starving themselves with these reduction diets, they eventually gain it all back because the body is trying to store fat. And so you've got to make sure you don't reduce your calories beyond expenditure. It's very unhealthy. It burns muscle and eventually will store fat. That's why 80% of people gain all the fat back. They gain all the way back and some. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So uh, that's the first thing. The second secret is to understand that you can burn different types of fuel, okay? It, as a, if the human body was designed to burn fat as a fuel source. Fat is the cleanest burning fuel source. Fat allows your mind to be on track. Your brain loves omega-3s. You're literally more genius and brilliance when you're burning fat. Or you can burn sugar. If you burn sugar, you have a hard time sleeping. You have low energy. You have digestive issues. You may have arthritic problems. You have headaches. There, there's more potential for disease. Now, in our country, our food has been so filled with sugar that what happens is whatever you give your body over time, it becomes efficient at burning. If you give your body sugar, sugar is in breads, cereal, rice, pasta, alcohol. If you give yourself those things over a period of time, your hormones begin to use sugar as a fuel source and not fat, okay? So no matter, no matter what diet you do, I don't care if you do paleo, keto, I don't care if you eat vegetables all day. It does not matter. You will not lose fat if your hormones, if you've become a sugar burner. So you must reset yourself from being a sugar burner to going back to a fat burner. There, the weight loss programs, 99% of them do not reset you back to being a fat burner. So that's principle number two. Does that make sense? Yeah. I got a quick question real quick. So, yeah. uh, so I was curious, uh, uh, like, what do you say, like, what do you say people who drink coffee ha have a bad weight, won't have a successful weight loss and keep it off because if they, Put put like sweeteners and everything else in their coffee, etc. Or so your question is: Do people that drink coffee have better weight loss? No, what I'm saying, 
do people who drink coffee, do they have a hard time losing weight as well because they put all the sweeteners in there? Uh, oh, like, oh, I see. Um, no, so I don't know if there's a correlation between that. Um, I get what you're saying about the sweeteners. Um, yes, there's sugar in there. I'd say sweetener in your coffee is probably the, it's just one source of sugar. I'd say the biggest source of sugar is breads, cereals, rice, and pasta. That's the bigger source. Um, if you look at yogurt, you think yogurt's healthy? Look at your, your, your ingredient label. Yogurt is full of sugar. There are some little yogurt packs that have 26 grams of sugar. That's way more than a cup of coffee. So I don't think the sugar in coffee is what's probably doing it. I mean, yes, it's adding to it. But all you got to do is look at the food. Um, that's what that's what's really doing is is, is the food is is laced with so much sugar. So that I'd say that probably has more of an impact than even just the sugar in coffee. But yes, it's impacting it for sure. But probably not as much as our food. Yeah, I I know about the I know on one of the yogurts that I was getting at the grocery store, and I noticed between the like the price of range of things, like for instance, like. This whole, like, let's say, twelve pack of yogurt, and I, I, I finally looked at the label one day, and that's because I was wondering why I was feeling like super energized and kind of feeling like I couldn't calm down, and, and like I could wear, run a marathon. And, and I looked at it like it was like twelve grams of sugar plus an extra twenty five grams of sugar, and I was like, ill. I might just well eat sugar out of the package. <laughs> it was kind of right. gross. Yes, exactly. When you start looking what's in the, inside your food, it's it's disgusting. Um, they lace. They 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 they. The reason. Do you know why they put so much sugar in food? Uh, because it's cheap and makes it taste good. Um. Yes, it's cheap. Yes, it makes taste good, but that's not the true real reason behind it is that sugar releases dopamine in your brain. That's the reason. Dopamine is the pleasure chemical. It actually gives you a sense of pleasure, a sense of accomplishment when you eat sugar. Uh, I was going to guess that next. As I actually heard uh, the word dopamine before, and I was like, I'm going to guess that next, but uh, he beat me to it. Yeah, yeah. So dopamine is the pleasure chemical in the brain. So the reason that companies put it in there is that you actually get pleasure, the same pleasure when you do drugs, when you have sex. It's the same reward center. It rewards you and makes you think that you've done something good in your life when you haven't, and it makes you buy more of the food. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Makes sense. Uh, uh, my next question for you, uh, what do you think people, uh, do you think when people are looking to lose uh, weight, well I, I, well, I had a guest on before, uh, and they talked about not eating in front of the TV. Do you agree with that? I don't see any correlation. Well, I, well somebody said because they had so many food commercials on TV, and you tend to eat more because you see like your favorite TV character is eating, and, and you're eating more, and you're bored on the couch eating more. I, um, it's, it's, I'm just telling you, it's not a tip I've ever given someone. And I don't see that it helps anyone in any way. Um, none of the thousands of people that I've taken through weight loss, I don't care if they watch TV or don't watch TV while they're eating. Um, it doesn't really have that big of an impact. Um, I haven't seen, yeah, I've never given that advice. Yeah. No, just curious. I just, uh, like I said, I have many different people on the show. I was like, uh, in front of the television, and then, uh, and I was like, uh, I was like, I don't really tend to eat in front of the television, but when I did, I was like, it's not that I really want more. I'm just, I was like, no, 
No, I, I don't see this question. But just to be honest with you, at night, I ate my dinner in front of the television. I yeah, it, it makes no impact on me at all. It's not yeah, it, it's not really honestly anything anyone should really be focused on. It has a very, very low impact. There are much more, way more important things that people should be focusing on, like for example, how to reset your hormones. You know, for example, um, when you remember I was telling you about when people are eating sugar over many many years. Eventually, their hormones reset. There are two hormones called leptin and ghrelin. Leptin and ghrelin are what tell you when you're hungry or when you're full, when to eat, when not to eat. And sugar, just so people understand this, sugar uh, tells your brain that you can eat more even if you can't. That's what's really important. Sugar tells you you can eat more even when you can't. So when you're a sugar burner, when you're running off of sugar, you just keep eating and eating. When you run off of fat, fat tells your brain you're full. So sugar lies to your brain and fat tells the truth. Sugar has the same receptors in the brain as cocaine. So this is a very highly addictive substance. And I, I would pay more attention to removing sugar from your diet than, you know, than the television. Yeah. I actually... So, so I, I I'm gonna put some some personal experience, uh, just to be relatable. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, not saying you're not relatable, but what I'm saying, uh, uh, just to share from my perspective as well. Yep. Uh, yep. I've been noticing. Uh, I was just in Ireland a week ago. Uh, and luckily, I finally got out of the five-hour <laughs> difference. Holy moly! Uh, uh, but but uh, what I've noticed when I was uh, before Ireland, I was really my, I was having really bad back pain, and uh, my doctor gave me these uh, anti-inflammatory medicine to uh, and back spasm medicine to get uh, to make it stop. And I, I only gave it to me for like one refill just so I can, because it was like really, really bad. And I felt like curling up in a ball and it's like, this hurts so bad. I can't even move. I can't even stand, can sit, can lay down. Anything I do was just ow. And so I finally, and so in Ireland, I, I, uh, my last three days in there, three days was there. I was like, I wonder what what's going on with my body, and I thought I was eating pretty healthy, and 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 then I kind of made a uh, I'm looking for the right word. I, I kind of think come came to a conclusion that it's not what I was eating, but because my doctor gave me this anti-inflammatory medicine as like some kind of a steroid, so to speak, is a little pill and just to reduce the inflammation. And I was like, wait, how did I get all the, how would I get all this inflammation? And I realized that certain foods I, I eaten over the years can cause inflammation and too much of this, too much of that. And so fast forward, I decided, you know, I'm going to try the uh, Mediterranean diet, not to lose weight or anything, because I don't need to lose weight. Uh, and, and so, and basically for almost two weeks now, I've had Zippo pain. I have zip, like, I might feel like a little discomfort in karate because I'm just working out and whatnot, but just like, just a mild discomfort of just being working out and whatnot as I supposed to feel feeling that little you know the, what the same the little feel the little burn and so I but like coming home from cry is like ah, I have been in pain my muscles don't feel my, my my punches don't feel like it's gonna like break my wrist and I was like I feel like really 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 good and I was like I like this so I, I just just sharing it's like you know uh, and it's like, 
I like, I kind of like how I re way I really feel. No back pain, no this, no that. And I was like, thank you, Mediterranean diet. I appreciate it. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, that's a that's a good thing. Um, the pro, you know, the challenge is with most people. If you're a sugar burner and your physiology is switched over to sugar, um, <clears throat> your your body it doesn't matter what what. So this is the challenge with most people going to diets. Most diets, the reason they don't work really well is because you haven't changed your hormones. Not you. You didn't really have to lose weight. But the average person who has 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds of fat, they've tried all kinds of diets, Mediterranean, paleo, keto. And the reason that hasn't worked is because there's no hormone reset. So one of the things we do, this is important for people to hear, is in the fast40weightloss.com, we actually take people in 40 days and we reset their hormones. So we take them through a process of eating clean. We reset the hormones. We have a proprietary uh, drops. Uh, uh, they're not chemicals, they're not pharmaceutical. They drop into the tongue every single day and it actually changes their hormones back from identifying sugar as a fuel source to, to identifying fat. Because the problem is if someone is 10, 20, 30 pounds overweight, even if they eat Mediterranean diet, their body is still burning sugar as a fuel source. So we've got to get the body back over to that fat burning process. And I, I want to I want to ask you: Does people have to cut sugar completely out, or can they like treat themselves during holiday meals? So, um, in our program, it takes forty days to reset your hormones. You must remove all sugars because the question you just ask is like, like you might as well ask me the same question about cocaine. If I want to get off cocaine, what happens if I have a little bit of cocaine? You you literally, it literally stimulates the receptors. Yes, you get right back on it. It stimulates the receptors and you go right back to it. So we only take 40 days, 40 days to reset. That's all it takes. Not the rest of someone's life, just 40 days. It resets the hormones. And then, yes, you can have sugar and alcohol and stuff like that back after, as long as your hormones have been reset. No, well, that's what I was talking about afterwards. Like, can, does it have to be completely forever, or could it be like, uh, like after forty days, hey, can I have a cookie? Or, yep, yep, yep. As long as as long as you have, um, if your hormones have been reset, um, you can have sugar. You can have alcohol. Um, yeah, and it doesn't cause a problem. It it really is about the hormone reset. That's the big deal. Ah, uh, so uh, like yeah, I, I actually have a rule of thumb that I live by for when I have sweets. I, I limit to pretty much holidays, and if I'm going to like one of my aunts and uncles' birthday parties, just I as a family gathering, I do so, but. If it's if it's something store bought, like I'm because like I live across the street from a grocery store, like I, I was like, nope, can't eat it. If it's homemade, I can eat it. And yeah. the reason why I limit myself to that because I was like, well, store bought ice cream, nothing's really good. Uh, I mean, it, it's not for me. It doesn't yeah. do it for me. It's like, gee, I can buy an ice cream. What we do. I can have ice cream uh, sandwiches. Doesn't do it for me. As I, as I, if it's like a specialty ice cream place down at the shore, it's like, I'll treat myself, but it's not worth it for me. Yeah, we um we have all of our patients actually cooking home cooked meals. Um, that's a really important piece is to really make a home cooked meal. Um, because you can't really. It's very challenging to uh, mitigate what what goes inside your food. Unless you're cooking it yourself, so yeah, I think that's a that's a really big deal for sure. What kind of foods should people eat when they're trying to lose weight? If someone is actually doing a hormone reset program, then I can give advice. If someone's not resetting their hormones, you're just wasting your time. But if you actually resetting your hormones, you need to remove sugar for forty days, and you need to eat lean meats vegetables and fruits you've got to remove all simple carbohydrates for 40 days to do a reset 
And I was curious, like, uh, could you tell our listeners what kind of like what's considered as a lean meat? With and is there any like lean red meats, or is it just pork, fish, chicken, etc.? Um, yeah, so um, generally pork isn't very lean. Pork is somewhat fatty, unless it's a lean pork chop. But basically, what you do is you look for the percentage of leanness in the meat. If you go to the store, you buy 97% lean ground beef. You can have steak, chicken, turkey, fish. It has nothing to do with the meat itself. It has more to do with the fat content. So you have to specifically ask a butcher or ask, the, you know, your, your, your person who's doing this, wh- you know, which, which one is the leanest meat for me, basically. Makes sense. I was just curious because, like, uh, for me, just because I've been uh, – let's just say sometimes I tend to get the like big steak at a steakhouse or uh and that's like once in a blue moon and whatnot. But I've been trying to just limit my uh red meat intake a little bit to once a week just so I don't feel like uh and plus red meat is like skyrocket to the roof and I do tend to eat only like lean pork chops, not uh this fatty pork all over the place. Uh-huh. Tend to stay away from bacon and everything Yeah, else. it's worth it. Someone can just Google it, but you can just Google the lean types of red meat. So um, remember, this is important. I'm only talking about the 40 days to reset your hormones. If you want to lose fat, you've got to cut the fat out of your diet, okay? So if you want to lose fat, you got to cut fat out of your diet. Once you're at a healthy uh, fat percentage, it's very important that you put fat back in your diet. Because I want to make sure you, people understand this, that fat is not the enemy. Fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. There's many, many studies um, done that sugar is the source of cardiovascular problems, not fat. Fat is God's most amazing fuel source. That's what it really, really is. So fat was designed <clears throat> for, for, for your body and mind to be at its most efficient power. Um, so... That's important. People understand. Don't avoid fat. Low fat diets are a fat are a fad. Low fat diets are very fucking unhealthy. Now, if you're going to lose fat, great, turn the fat out. But if you're at a healthy level, you got to put fats back in. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what would be a healthy fat level? Um, that's that's an individual matter. For what what age, what gender, and what body type are you asking about? Holy moly! Yeah, yeah. It, it's you know one one thing I've said to somebody on the show that everything about like health and wellness is like it's always goes down to age, gender, this, that, and everything, and everything. I was like, oh my goodness! It's, and it's like there's so many articles that write is like this is the best way to be at, and they don't include any of that. Yeah. Yeah, because the, you, you, that question is, I can't answer that because what what is a healthy fat percentage for a six foot seven, three hundred pound man, or a, a five foot two woman? It's not it's, it's not the same, right? It's just so so it's really challenging to do it based on that. So yeah, that's exactly why it's like that. Yeah, I understand. I, I know it's kind of vague. I, I just wanted to ask because like when I when I read some of these articles and that I come across, it's like. They didn't go over any of this at all. So it, it's a vague article yeah. and people take their advice and it's like, exactly. I want to take this exactly. advice. And it's like, they don't, I was like, well, uh, I know my, uh, I'm not going to say any of my numbers, but like, I'll say my way is like 164, 165 ish, depending on, it goes fluctuates a little bit between the two. And, and so I'm like, okay. Uh, this article is not for me because there's a, and the person in the article is like, uh, I think the person is like 50 years old and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to, it's like, that's not for me at all, but okay. Uh, and I, I'm just kind of curious on how these people, how some of these uh, publications can write like that because like people are obviously going to try this. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, you um, you really need to look at um, your own. So you, so if you're going to look at if someone wants to know their, their proper fat percentage, they have to do it by age, by gender, and by body size, meaning body frame, meaning small, medium, or large. So so that that's really important. <clears throat> and Jimmy, I apologize. I'm uh, my uh, I didn't I don't have my power cable, but my computer is literally about to run out of power. So I don't want to I don't want it to crash out. But I just wanted to tell you ahead of time. No worries. Uh, so before we wrap up, can, where can people follow you and find you and learn more about who you are and what you do? Oh, thank you. So anyone can go to fast40weightloss.com and you can, you, can, you can research the program there. You can schedule a consultation. Also, the new book on the four secrets to healthy weight loss is on Amazon. I think that's a really great way to do that. Awesome. Thank you. I hope you can come back on again in the future. Oh, I'd love to, man. I'd love to. Thanks so much for having me, man. Sorry, my sorry, I had to get off soon. I I think it's going to crash in about one or two minutes here. No worries. Have a good rest of your night. Awesome, brother. Sounds good. Now, yeah, I look look forward to connecting again. Okay. So that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow. Uh, for another brand new episode of Crazy Fitness Guy Help Us Love Podcast slash Rico Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Oh, and uh